Hey, it's me once again, and um, I did this video earlier, but I got so sleepy, I was like drooping in and out, and finally I was just sitting here, and I just, I was out, <clears throat> so I decided to I woke up and delete the other one and give this another try. Anyway, I want to read something here about, about, uh, somewhat easing things um, you, you know and um, I looked it up um, somewhat is like an indeterminate amount of time or something or quantity um, so I was looking through the Bible and everything um, in chapter um, <clears throat> 10 of Second Chronicles when Jeroboam came with the um, all of Israel and said hey look you know how about you somewhat ease the uh, servitude and, you know, we'll serve you faithfully. You get a full story on, on um, Jeroboam when you go to uh, um, First Kings chapter 11, verse 26. And this is what it says about that. Uh, and Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, an Ephronite, Ephratite, Eph Ephratite, sorry, of Zerida, Solomon's servant, whose mother's name was Zeroya, a widow woman, even, I probably didn't say that right, even he lifted up his hand against the king. And this was the cause that he lifted up his hand against the king. Solomon built Milo and repaired the breaches of the city of David, his father. And the man, Jeroboam, was a mighty man of valor. And Solomon, seeing the young man that he was industrious, he made him ruler of all over all the uh, charge of the house of Joseph. Everything. Okay, Ephraim. Yep. And it came to pass at that time when Jeroboam went out of Jerusalem that the prophet Ahijah the Shalonite found him in the way. He had clad himself with a new garment, that is Jeroboam, and they too were alone in the field. And Ahijah caught the new garment that was on him and rent it in twelve pieces. He said to Jeroboam, Take thee ten pieces, for thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel. Behold, I will rend the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon and will give ten tribes to thee. But he shall have one tribe for my servant David's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, the city which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, because that they have forsaken me and have worshipped Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians, Chemosh, the god of the Moabites, and Milcom, the god of the um, children of Ammon, and have not walked in my ways to that which is right in mine eyes, and to keep my statutes and my judgments, as did David his father. Howbeit I will not take the whole kingdom out of his hand, but I will make him prince all the days of his life for David my servant's sake, whom I chose, because he kept my commandments and my statutes. But I will take the kingdom out of his son's hand, and will give it unto thee, even ten tribes. And unto his son will I give one tribe, and David, my servant, <clears throat> may have a light alway before me in Jerusalem, the city which I have chosen me to put my name there. And I will take thee, and thou shalt reign according to all that, that thy soul desireth, and shalt be king over Israel. And it shall be, if thou wilt hearken unto all that I command thee, and will walk in my ways, and do that which is right in my sight, to keep my statutes, and my commandments as David my servant did that I will be with thee and build thee a sure house as I built for David and will give Israel unto thee and I will for this afflict the seed of David but not forever Solomon sought therefore to kill Jeroboam and Jeroboam arose and fled into Egypt unto Shishak king of Egypt and was in Egypt until the death of Solomon and the rest of the acts of Solomon and all that he did, 
and his wisdom, are they not written in the book of the Acts of Solomon? That's a question mark. And the time that Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel uh, was 40 years. And Solomon slept with his fathers and was buried in the city of David his father. And Rehoboam his son reigned in his stead. So I'm going to interject that. But anyway, let's read into it and see what it says here. Um, chapter 10, it says, And Rehoboam went to Shechem, for Shechem were all where Shechem were all Israel come to make him king. <clears throat> and it came to pass when Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who was in Egypt, whether whither he had fled, um, that's where he had fled, from the presence of Solomon the king, heard it, and Jeroboam returned out of Egypt. And they went and called him. So Jeroboam and all Israel came and spake to Rehoboam, saying, Thy father made our yoke grievous. Now therefore ease thou somewhat the grievous servitude of thy father, and his heavy yoke that he put upon us, and we will serve thee. He's saying like, look, it's a grievous servitude. Ease it somewhat, and we'll, we'll serve you. You know, it's a little hard. It's, give us a break. Cut us some slack. <clears throat> you know. And he said unto them, Come back to me, unto me, after three days. And the people departed. Now, I'm sure Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, could have made this decision all by himself. But no, look. This is what he does. And King Rehoboam took counsel with the old men that had stood before Solomon his father while he yet lived, saying, What counsel give ye me to return answer these, to these people? And they spake unto him, saying, If thou be kind to this people, and please them, and speak good words to them, they will be thy servants forever. But he forsook the counsel which the old men gave him, and took counsel with the young men that were brought up with him, that stood before him. And he said unto them, What advice give ye that we may return answer to, these, to this people, which have spoken to me, saying, Ease somewhat the yoke that thy father did put upon us. And the young men that were brought up with him spake unto him, saying, Thus shalt thou answer to the people that spake unto thee, saying, Thy father made our, our yoke heavy, but make it thou somewhat lighter for us. <clears throat> for, I'm sorry, thus shalt thou say unto them, My little finger shall be thicker than my father's loins. loins. For whereas my father put a heavy yoke upon you, I will put more to your yoke. My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam on the third day as the king bade, saying, Come again to me on the third day. And the king answered them roughly. And King Rehoboam forsook the counsel of the old men. And answer them after the advice of the young men, saying, My father made your yoke heavy, but I will add thereto. My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. So the <clears throat> king hearkened not unto the people, for the cause was of God, and the Lord that the Lord might perform his word, which he had spake by the hand of Ahijah, the Shilonite. Jeroboam the son of Nebat. <clears throat> and when all Israel saw that the king would not hearken, turn the page. This is my new Thompson Church Bible Publishers Bible. And I'm not really in it yet. My other Bible's out in the car. I'm going to wait until I get to the New Testament and start reading through this. 
um, to, unto them. The people answered the king, saying, What portion have we in David? And we have none inheritance in the son of Jesse, every man to your tents, O Israel. And now David, see to thine own house, for all Israel went to their tents. But as for the children of Israel that dwelt in the cities of Judah, Rehoboam reigned over them. Then King Rehoboam sent Hadaram that was over the tribute, and the children of Israel stoned him with stones that he died. But King Rehoboam made speed to get him up to his chariot to flee to Jerusalem. And Israel rebelled against the house of David into unto this day so <clears throat> evidently he was giving the people a hard time whether it was tribute or some other kind of um servitude or whatever because see you know, that, that's kind of threw me off a little bit because i thought you know the servitude came from the strangers that were in the land that were not of israel but evidently they were there was a tribute that solomon was getting through everybody or something like that or more of a tribute, I guess, or something. I don't know completely. I got to read Second Kings again in that part. I might have been one of those times I was reading it and I kind of drifted off, fell asleep at work um, in between rounds. <laughs> but anyway, so ease thou somewhat thy servitude, you know, and everything. It, it, you know, give us a break, cut us a break. And instead of Rehoboam listening to the wise men and to the young men and determining between the two, being intermediate between the two, instead of being indeterminate, get that indeterminate. So he was an intermediate. He didn't take both considerations to be that wise king that he should have been at the time. He went and leaned more toward the young men who were around his age who he grew up with and uh, everything he didn't listen because he he didn't want to play he didn't want to be a people pleaser he didn't want to he's like he's the king why should he please people you know what i mean but uh, in that case he wasn't ruling very wisely and um because <clears throat> he listened to one side and not the other and that might be a good thing for like trump trump will have people who you know to feel like there's a liberal cause for one thing and then there might be a the other side might feel there's a, a republican cause for another you know uh, about raising taxes or not to raise taxes or, or something to do with gun control or not to have something to do with gun control so both sides need to be heard so he can make an informed decision or a very wise decision um, and not go with one person but to consider both ideas and make inform his own um, uh, uh, decision being he's the president and the same thing here with um, uh, King Saul I mean King Rehoboam um, <clears throat> anyway you know that's what he would do that's what all presidents do I'm sure and that's what all kings do there's still kings that do that you know <clears throat> they have to come they come to their own conclusion you know but being that it was the word of God, um, the real bone went with uh, the, the younger group, the guys he grew up with, and that was fulfilled by the word of God. So naturally it was going to happen just as it was said through Ahijah. Um, anyway, let's see here. I thought I could pause this thing. Um, so with that being said, uh, see here. What I found very interesting was at the last verse of uh, chapter 10, I'm sorry, or chapter 11. Um, okay. At verse 23, he said, it says, well, verse 22 to 23, let's read it like that. And Rehoboam made Abijah the son of Micah, Micah, the chief, to be ruler among, this bro among his brethren, for he thought to make him king. You know, favoritism, right? And he dealt wisely, finally, 
and dispersed of all his children throughout all the countries of Judah and Benjamin, even um, Benjamin, unto even every city that he gave them victual in abundance, and he, and he desired many wives. Let me try that again. And he dealt wisely and dispersed of all his children throughout all the countries of Judah and Benjamin unto either, every fenced city, and he gave them victual in abundance, and he desired many wives. Okay. And it came to pass when every did strengthen himself, he forsook the law of God. Um, in chapter 12. But so, uh, showing some wisdom here. The Holy Spirit is showing that he finally got a little wise. Finally. But he wasn't very wise, evidently, whenever it came to determine in between um, the young men and the old men. Because Rehoboam and all of Israel said, look, he's this servitude somewhat. You know, just let's just take it easy. A little too hard. Give us a break. Cut us a break somewhere. You know, that might have been something to do with the tribute. I don't know. Uh, that we see in the Hadarim was stoned to death in and Rehoboam got out of Dodge real quick like um don't know but um <clears throat> I'm sure somebody else can read out and find you know what exactly it was saying but I, I mean at the time I don't know <clears throat> but anyway it's um it's giving me a hint that um the word of God is saying that you know take the both considerations one consideration is no don't let up on them make it hard other sides, yeah, you know, be nice to them, be sweet to them, be loving to them, be kind and gentle. And they'll love you to death. Instead of making his own decision to get right there in the middle, kind of work it out in both ways. No, he listens to the young men. And that right there was already prophesied to come. That was his downfall, but God even works in that. But anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. thought that might be pretty interesting. And um, just like that one was, hopefully. Uh, chapter 36 and that's all I had to say and uh, I think I'm going to try to get a little bit more sleep well a couple hours maybe alright we'll see you later God bless and I hope you enjoyed it and um, that, that's something that's always kind of baffled me there and the Holy Spirit is teaching on that you know the more you allow him to teach you something another on that the more you understand and not understanding of yourself not understanding how man understands it but you understand because the Holy Spirit shows it to you you ask him to show you and not a man you get more information than you would get from a man you know it's amazing well that's all I had to say for now God bless we'll see you later and talk to you next time